past the hour now, death toll rising, at least 40, maybe 42 people. Crews getting a better look at the devastation from Florence. Brian Yenis has made his way to New Bern, North Carolina, where damage estimates have already topped $100 million. That's not a large town. A lot of that damage in the agricultural sector as well, where we find you. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Look, agriculture is the state's top industry. We are in Glen Ipox Farm. This was his corn crop, but 100 mile an hour winds snapping the stalks in half. The corn cob falling on the ground in wet mud. Others are now sprouting, making them unusable. Glenn thinks he'll lose half of this corn crop at least, and he's not alone. Six of the top uh, worst counties hit by floods are also the state's top agricultural uh, counties. And really what they're saying is this storm on top of the low commodity prices driven by the tariff war has a lot of people on the brink. The dilemma is we have a federal crop insurance that we carry, but it's probably not going to pay anything because uh, the guarantee level that I have has probably already been met. So I'm not really expecting anything from federal crop, but we are hopeful they may make some kind of small settlement. Hopefully we don't know. It's probably going to put the nail in the coffin for a lot of our farmers who were already financially strapped. Making matters worse, IPOC has lost a year's worth of tobacco, the state's number one crop. Loss of electricity in tobacco curing barns has ruined the tobacco, turning it into a chocolate color. Glenn and Jason Bill are Trump supporters, but they say, look, they are strapped in loan debt and they need that farm bill passed now. And that's not going to be enough. They're going to need some farmer disaster relief. This as the flooding continues, some 4,700 rescues taking place. Those rivers still rising wow. eastern part of the state. Remarkable bill. stuff more than a week later. Brian Yannis, thank you, sir, very much. And new